raising royalty requires us to teach our children from birth that they are different. Um, children do not just grow up normal and royal at the same time. Um, this may go against a lot of what you all have been taught, but regardless of what has become popular belief, royalty is not just bloodline. Royalty does not just come from, just is not just second nature. Royalty is not automatic. Royalty is actually a learned behavior. The reason why even today there are certain people who the world calls royals is because from birth everyone around these children begin to teach them and tell them who they are whose they are and that they are royal and that they have royal blood running through their veins and therefore, that royal blood that's in their veins, um, by, by nature of, in this case, simply by nature of the digital DNA, you were born separated from the rest of the world. And... Um, without going too deep into that, you have to teach, or we have to teach the next generation that there are some things that as royalty, we just don't do. There are some things as royalty we just don't say. There are actually some places as royalty we just don't go. There are some crowds as royalty we just don't hang out with. No. Mm -mm. Why? Because our our uh, being born into royalty has placed us on a particular path. And that path, if I'm, I'm uh, use the what we call the biblical term for it, that path is the path of righteousness. And so therefore, the crowd that we hang out with is supposed to be the crowd that is also traveling on this righteous path. The Hebrew word, of course, is direct. And 
And that word literally means the well uh, worn path or the path that already has the groove of success. And so we um, have to teach our children that because we say this is the path. Now, of course, in order to show the righteous path, um, as adults, we have to know it. And, and again, I know that for this generation, it may be too late because of our indoctrination with all of this. There is no such thing as truth. Your right is not my right. Your wrong may not be my wrong. What you think is what you think and how you feel is how. And, and so you got all these really in, in my generation and probably the next generation under me lessons like this. They, it, it doesn't, it, <laughs> these are the kind of lessons that irritate people. But for the called and the generation of royalty that's listening to Moray, you need to understand that the scriptures teach us, oh my goodness, especially when we go through this, um, <laughs> the, these proverbs, of these two distinct paths. One path is a path of righteousness that leads to life. The other path is a path of wickedness or raw or dysfunction that leads to death. And as the righteous, we must always choose the path that leads um, to life and to eternal life, ultimately. So um, in the previous video in this series of Raising Kings and Queens, I talked about bandanas and fat chains. And I gave a small illustration about how a bandana, when I was a kid, growing up in the country, working in the fields, was nothing but a rag. Matter of fact, it was the cheapest rag in the store that we used to go out and, and work, wipe our face, our sweat, blow our nose, whatever. Bow that thing up, throw it in your pocket, and you would get like four or five of them in a pack. At the end of the day, you crumble them things up, threw them in the washing machine or whatever. Mama had them washed. We did the same thing, and we and we had every color and all that. And I mentioned how how I thought it was the dumbest thing ever to see people who were in the city, who had never been in the fields, who had never worked in in the fields. Whether it was they never had uh, picked no grapes, they had never been in the almond orchards, they had never tossed no watermelon, <laughs> been in the watermelon patch field, they never picked no beans, none of that kind of stuff. And yet grown people, older people who had never done that kind of work was wearing bandanas and they said that that was something of importance. And to me, coming out of the fields, I'm like, why would a person want to identify with field workers? When I got older, I didn't want to see another bandana. <laughs> but but when your mind has been, when your mind, when people have, have played tricks on you to make you uh, not know who you are and whose you are, then you find yourself, like I said, um, trying to find, trying to find identity in the color of literally a worthless rag. And and it's and it's a signification of field work of all work, and so you are identifying yourself with field workers, and and yet oh, it was just it was it just doesn't to, to the more it it didn't then, and it still does not make any sense. But the reason that I brought that out was to say, when a person wears the rag, um, not in the country because in the country it didn't mean nothing, <laughs> but in the city. When they were wearing it, it identified them with a particular group of people. And the most part, it was gang and gang related activity. And believe it or not, 30 years later, them same people, 30, 40 years later, those same people that was wearing that stuff back then, 30 years later, is still putting on these, <laughs> these same bandanas. And there's still, I mean, that, that, that madness and foolishness is still going on among our people. It's terrible. Um, but, but I mentioned that the righteous headdress of the 
of the Israelite is that of what? Of the Torah, which becomes our headdress, which becomes our identifier. It, it is the thing that guards our mind and guards our thoughts and is to be wrapped around our head. And that's what brings us beauty. And that's what brings us um, identity and things like that. So in that video, I tried to go into that to explain that the idea of the head wrap is to guard your mind, but it also identifies you so that when you start walking your path of life, you're not walking according to some, you know, liquor store rag. You, you, you are walking with Torah as a headdress and therefore you should only seek to find those who are also walking with Torah as a headdress. Just like if you are in a group a gang of people who wear red, they look for people with red on. Just like the people in blue look for blue. Well, Zion, you as royalty, you should be seeking out other royals. You as Torah, you need to be seeking out, uh, you as those who are the chosen in Torah should be seeking out those who are the chosen in Torah, who have the headdress of righteousness. The second thing, um, that I mentioned in the previous video was fat chains. And I talked about how, um, again, you know, connected to gangs primarily among our people, there is this thing that after they do their wickedness, whether it is selling poison to their own people, robbing, stealing, looting, however they do it, working with the underworld, um, the illegitimate and unrighteous gain of the gangs are shown on with an outward display most of the time. Um, the display of choice is chains. And so let's say you have like these, let's say a person is doing drugs or dealing in drugs. I don't care if they're selling pills or they're selling crack cocaine to the neighborhood or they're whatever they're doing whatever kind of whatever kind of evil that's going on in the gains that they generate funds they're generating these funds and spending the money to to get chains and so this is ill gain this is satanic gain but they wear these chains as as badges of honor and a chain is symbolic of control. And I mentioned that in the previous video, so I won't go too deep in that. Uh, the chain is a symbol of control. And the idea is who is controlling you. So the idea when you are dealing with unrighteous gain, then what is controlling you is sin. What's controlling you is uh, this, this gang life and this gang mentality. It, it, it has your mind, that's why you put on that bandana. It has your neck, that's why you, they wear these fat chains and they believe that's how they get you know, honor and respect. Um, even though everyone knows that the reason that they have this is because they're either robbing, they're stealing, they're committing um, crimes, or they're selling drugs, the majority. Um, it's part of what the whole gang thing is, or you probably wouldn't have gangs. <laughs> uh, when, so, so the Torah then tells us, as royalty, we too have a chain. But it's not the chain that is gained by wickedness, drug sales, um, laundering, you know, dirty money, um, none of that. Selling poison to our communities, no. The chain that we have is again, the, the, the chain of the Torah, the instructions of our mother and our father. And that chain is more beautiful and more valuable than the gold chains and diamonds that are around the neck of the wicked. And the reason is because the chains of the instruction of our father and the chains that are the instructions of our mother, they go with us when we leave the house and we are still under their control. Now, again, I'm talking about righteous 
And again, I'm not talking about necessarily this generation because the majority of the adults in this generation don't really know what is righteous and what is not righteous. Today, anything that creates uh, what's considered to be wealth or money or gain is somehow always excused into being righteous today. And that's why I always, I, I mention that. I can't even really talk to this generation. I'm talking to the next generation because hopefully after watching this and watching what's going on, the next generation will be smart enough not to follow the wicked paths of, uh, and the unrighteous and the dysfunctional paths of, of your, of your parent, of your four parents. You should be able to make decisions. Okay. Now that's important. And, uh, the reason that that is important is because I made a comment that I want to show you. I said, because as soon as you leave the house, you're going to need this chain from your mother and your father. So when they're not there, you could still feel the tug. That's why it's important. You have to start teaching your children Torah when they are little. You have to start disciplining your, disciplining your children, giving them a discipline or being the disciplinarian when they are young. And in every stage of life, there must be discipline. And that discipline has to be according to the Torah. Because what Yah says it will do, it will be the headdress. In other words, it will help that royal child, that royal son, that royal daughter, when they leave the house, it will help them not become what we used to say, buck wild. Why? Because something about that headdress, that Torah, as they wear it, they go, you know what? I know better than that because of the way I was taught, the way my mother, the way my father instructed me. I know there are certain things, certain activities, certain behavior I just shouldn't be a part of. But when our, uh, either our emotion or the lust of the flesh or whatever it is begins to <laughs> cause us to not think straight, then the chain around the neck, which is also Torah, the instructions, is the thing that's supposed to make us act straight, <laughs> to act right. So even when intellectually we give in, there's supposed to be something that when we get ready to go into an area that we shouldn't be going into, there should be something there placed by your mother and your father that pulls that chain and pulls the choke on you. And you say, ah, I can't go there. And the people say, like, let's say you're hanging out with some friends and they say, hey, we're getting ready to go over here and do such and such. And you go, nah, man, I'm going home. They say, what? Are you a sissy? Are you a punk? Are you sorry? You don't want to go over here and do such and such? And then in your mind, you're like, oh, you know, I'm finna prove these people. I ain't no punk. But then you get ready to go and something choke you. <laughs> Every time you take a step, you got, <laughs> I ain't going. Mm -mm. My daddy don't got to be here. I'm not going over there with y'all. Y'all have at it. Man, come on, man. Ain't nobody going to know. It don't matter. Not only is the Torah in my mind right now, but literally I can feel the, the spirit, the Ruach of Yah telling me not to take another step in the direction that y'all walking in. And that can only happen, Zion, when you as an individual was raised to think like that. That is actually the way royalty is raised. Royalty is raised to say, I can see the lines. I can see my limitations. I can see, or I should be able to see, when a person is trying to lead me off of the righteous path. All right? And it's like, I can't go down that route. So, wow, I see that my time is almost up for this already, but I want to, should I put this in this video?
I need to make an executive decision right now. <laughs> you know what? I just made the executive decision that um, I'm going to go ahead and put it in this video. So it's going to be a little bit longer. Proverbs chapter one. Proverbs chapter one. And if you go down to verse number 10, and, and I will uh, won't explore this whole thing in this video, but I just want to at least introduce this to you. If you go down to verse number 10, it says, my son. OK, so we already know that this is Solomon speaking as the father to his son. But what he is really doing excuse me, what he's really doing is repeating what his father, King David, your grandfather, my grandfather, taught him. So he's saying, my dad taught me this and I'm teaching you all this. So this is our bloodline. These are our, this is our grandparents really teaching us. Now watch what he says. My son, if sinners entice thee, that's King James, Consent thou not. Stop. He said, look, my son, if sinners try to entice you, and that word is interesting, because to entice, Hebraically, it means to create a circle around. And I'll get into that more in the next video. The idea is to create a circle uh, and a circle around. And the purpose of the circle is to persuade you to do one thing or another. And believe me, we'll get into that in the next video. And, and in this enticement, there is always the lure um, there's always the lure of you're going to be rich. You're going to be wealthy. You're going to have it all. If you just come this way and then you get surrounded by something that looks good, sounds good, and inside of the enticement, they're saying, just come this way. Why? Because you're going to have it all. You're going to be rich. You're going to be powerful. You're going to be satisfied. You're going to be happy. You're going to get everything you've ever wanted. Just come with us. Right? So that is an enticement. I'll get deep into that in the next video. But for now, watch this. He says, if sinners entice you. And that right there is where I'm going to really end this video. I want to talk about this idea of sinners. Remember I said earlier that you got to teach your children that they're different. One of the things that, uh, unfortunately, religion and, and for sure Christianity has taught is they have taken um, a word like sin or sinner. And they have convinced the whole world that everybody is sinners. You know what? Let me, um, I'm losing, I'm losing my light. Let me move over just a little bit. Y'all know I'll be doing these things live. And I hope you appreciate, um, I hope y'all appreciate, I try to bring you some nice background and, and, um, <laughs> you know, go, I drive to these, um, remote places oftentimes to, um, you know, because sometimes, you know, if you're in an apartment and the house is dreary, just being able to go outside and if you just can't physically go to a place like this, you know, sometimes the more is able to get to places like this and I just think it's beautiful. And so I'm really doing it. No, I, it's therapy for me and I hope it is also a blessing for you too. Okay, but anyway, where was I going? Oh, I was talking about this idea of a sinner. And what religion has done is that once again, they have taken a truth and perverted it. 
They have taken a truth and stretched it. Or one of the one of the words that is probably more biblically accurate in English is they've taken a truth and twisted it. They they twist it. So so the one of the things I want to talk about in the next video is this this what is a sinner? Because obviously if he says, if sinners entice thee, he's not talking about righteous people. But if the ch churches and the religious systems have taught you that everybody is a sinner. So now you think that ev everybody who sins is a sinner. And of course, uh, linguistically speaking based on the language and based on uh, the, I get based on the nuances of language I guess you could technically say that but hebraically speaking everybody is not considered to be sinners I know every time y'all come in the room or, or open a video of the moray Abaya is using me to help open your eyes to certain truths, and I already know what's happening. When I show you certain things, what's going to happen is the first thing is to reject it. You're, you have a knee-jerk reaction based on how you were raised and what you were taught. Man, where are you going with this? And so there's already one to put up the dukes and fight. Hey, you getting mad, you're going to get glad in a minute. Don't worry about that. So <clears throat> the idea of sinners with the sinners plural is a categorizing of a particular group of people, but not Israel. Man, come on, man. Oh, I'm trying to tell you. So what do you mean by that, Moray? The Bible says for all have sinned. Yes, it sure does. And everybody has sinned, that's for sure, for sure. But in the Bible, our culture saw two groups of people. They saw people, because remember, um, Israel is royalty. So when you read scripture, you're going to see this all through the Old Testament, what y'all call Old Testament, but you see in the New Testament too. It's in the whole Bible. You're going to see the Bible talk about righteous and sinners. Again, in organized religion, you were just told everybody a sinner, everybody going to hell, everybody did it all, everybody, everybody, everybody. So everybody's thinking, well, then, hey, then we just going to hope for the best. It's not, that's not the way. That might be the way these Europeans are interpreting our Bible, but that's not the way our scriptures teach us. The way the scriptures teach us is that there's two groups of people. And while both groups of people have committed sin, they have all sinned. There are some people who are classified as sinners. And then there's other people who are classified in scripture as righteous our ancestors looked at some people as sinners and then other people as righteous. It's true. So that everybody is not considered to be a part of the group called sinners. Because if that was the case, if everybody is in the same group of sinners, then this verse don't make any sense. If sinners if sinners entice you. So who are these sinners? If everybody's a sinner, then it'd be of anybody. But he doesn't say that. He says sinners. And there's a reason that he uses that term because the Israelites in scripture were not ever supposed to be known as sinners.
So who are, how are we supposed to be known? Righteous. Royal priesthood. Chosen generation. A peculiar people. Kings. Queens. <laughs> when you read the Bible, when you read the Bible and start understanding, like I've been telling you, when you really start to grasp certain concepts, it's going to change your behavior. If you tell your child his whole life that he's a sinner, a sinner, a sinner, then that, then that quote unquote child is going to then start operating as a sinner. But if we were to tell our children, you're not a sinner, you're the righteous. You're the righteous of Yah. We keep Yah's laws, his statutes and his commandments. We walk according to the Torah. The sinners don't walk according to the Torah. They walk according to the dictates of their own heart. They move according to the very whelms of their imagination. Sinners don't follow the path of righteousness. Sinners don't keep Torah. Sinners don't train up the children in the way that they should go. No, no, sinners just do whatever they want. But we are not sinners. We are the righteous. And therefore, as the righteous, we should not be living and behaving like the sinners. We have a different lifestyle. So, again... Hebraically speaking, he says, there's a group out there called sinners, but you're not in that group. You're in the group of the righteous. So when you walk out of this palace, of this castle, of this house, or this apartment, or this tent, it doesn't matter. The world of sinners is going to be able to see royalty. And the first thing that the center, the sinners are going to want to do is they are going to want to entice you because you are royalty and they can see it. The bandana that you have on your head is not from a liquor store. It's the righteousness and it's the, and it's the power and instructions of your mother and your father. And they can see that you wearing a chain and that chain is better than the chain they got and more valuable. It's more powerful. And so what they're saying is, let's get him. Let's get her. And if, if ooh, I got too much to say about it, I'm going to have to make another video. But if you really look at most of the so-called prominent people in the world today, especially among Israelites, most of the prominent Israelites grew up with a particular amount of instructions. And they didn't really start going off until they got in the crowd of sinners. When they got in that crowd with the sinners, the, the sinners said, come over here and let's do this and we'll be rich. And, and the majority of the ones that we see now, it's kind of it's kind of sickening. I don't have time to get into that, but they are convinced to go against what we call their upbringing. And now they're out here acting a fool. We used to say now they're acting like they ain't got no sense. Now they're out here out here acting like they ain't got no home training. Why? Because most of the time it's the royal class of people, especially we're talking about Israel. The royal class of the house of Judah have, have a lot of skills. Um, the royal class of Yehuda can sing better than everybody on the planet, can play music, all instruments better than anybody on the planet. They can act and perform better than anybody on the planet. They can dance better than anybody on the planet Earth. They can do whatever they put their mind and their heart to do. They're eventually going to be the best at it. It doesn't matter what it is. 
and the rest of the world, especially the world of sinners, can see that. And so one of one of the things that sinners sinners do is that they seek to entice the righteous. And because most of the righteous don't know they're righteous, most of the righteous don't even know they're Israel, most of the true righteous don't even know they're royalty, they fall for the okie doke. And next thing you know, they're going along with the sinner crowd. And you can't tell the difference. Some of these righteous are out sinning the sinners. So we'll get more into that definition in our next video. But I hope this at least stimulated some thought. In, at, at least it stirred up something inside of you to say, is he telling the truth? And when you research it, you're going to be like, yeah, he's telling the truth. I'm going to close with this. When you when you hear this instruction about being enticed by sinners and not going that way, saying no, right? When you hear that, it should echo. Which, what, what, Maury, what should it echo? Psalm 1. So Proverb 1, which is Solomon telling us what his father David told him, he starts off the Proverbs exactly the way King David started off the song. I gotta go. Psalm 1 and Proverb 1 start off exactly alike. Why? Because that's father and son. So Psalm 1 starts off, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. So obviously, the man he's talking about is not considered a sinner. I'm going I'm to let that one sink in for a while. And I will get deeper into it on our next video. One love, Zion, as always. Subscribe to the channel if you want to. And if these videos are helping you and they're supporting you, support the ARC. Help help us. Um, when you support us, you're helping us be able to continue to support Israel and to help wake up Jacob in these last days. One love. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There is a difference between the sinner and the saint. Hallelujah. <laughs>